So you're at the gym and you get off your treadmill and you start heading over to the section where all the weights are and you look around and you wonder, where do I begin? What do I do? How much do I do? How often do I do it? This video is going to answer some of those questions for you. So as we talked about in one of our previous videos, we talked about the benefits of resistance training. And one of the benefits we talked about is being better in interacting with your external world. Are you going to be able to lift that box at work? Are you going to be able to stand up out of your chair if it's too low? Um, resistance training can benefit a whole lot of people. And today we're going to go through what it looks like to actually do it. And to help us today, we're going to use again what we call the FIT principle. The FIT principle is an acronym that stands for um, different variables that we can adjust to modify our training. And so F stands for frequency, I stands for intensity, T stands for time, and the other T stands for type. So the F stands for frequency, and frequency is determining how many times a week that we should be doing it. It's been recommended that we train each major muscle group two to three times per week. Now there's lots of different ways that you can break that down. What are the major muscle groups? Um, here's one way, one simple way that we can go about that. It's not the only way, there are many ways that we can break this down, but here's one way we can break it down. The, Probably one of the easier ways to think about it is we have pushing movements and we have pulling movements. And so we can push in different directions and we can pull in different directions. And depending on which way we push and pull, we're using different muscle groups. And so maybe one day you're doing a lot of pushing movements. So for example, you can lay down on your back and you can push something away from you. So that is a horizontal push. You can also be standing up, you can grab some weights, and you can be pushing up towards the ceiling. That is a vertical push. Um, you could even potentially take something and um, push it down. There are machines at the gym where you sit down, you grab a bar, and you push something down. And so maybe one day you do all these different pushing movements. You're pushing all these different directions. You can also push with your legs. Maybe you sit down at one of the leg press machines and you push away with your legs and by doing that you're using most of the major muscle groups for pushing and then the next day you come into the gym and you decide well I'm going to do some pulling movements so for example I can pull something towards me horizontally I can pull something towards me vertically and I can also pull something towards me vertically this way and so we can get all these different pulling movements and then for the legs, we can also think about pulling something from the ground. So maybe I bend down, I pick something up, and I pull it off the ground. And so these are, that's just one simple way to be able to break down um, the major different muscle groups, pushing and pulling, uh, without you know, going into detail with a specific workout plan. And now if you guys are interested in a specific workout plan, contact us, and we can definitely work with you and get you on board with something. But as far as frequency is concerned, you need to be training each one of those major muscle groups two to three times per week. So I stands for intensity, which is how intense something should be. Now most of the recommendations are listed um, in percentages of one rep max. So um, you know how heavy can you lift something one time and then you break it down by percentages. Um, for beginners, probably one of the easier ways to do this is by um, going through what we call an RPE scale, so how hard something feels to you. 10 being, I could lift this thing one time and, and that's all I can lift it. And then one being, this is so light I could lift this a bunch of times and hardly ever get tired. Most of the time for beginners, you want to be somewhere around 6 to 8 on the RPE scale. So not so heavy that you can do it multiple times, but also not very light either. You need to be challenged when we're lifting weights in order for you to improve. All right, the first T stands for time. And the research kind of shows there's really no good definition of how much time you should be spending in the gym. Um, as long as you're training each major muscle group two to three times per week. Um, and then we're gonna talk about reps and sets here in a little bit. But um, as far as how much physical time you're spending in the gym doesn't matter too much. Um, probably shouldn't be spending two to three hours unless you are you know, very interested in bodybuilding and that type of stuff. So what types of exercises should we be doing? Well, we should be doing something that's providing resistance for our body, whether it's external weights by using dumbbells and resistance bands, or whether it's using our own body weight. For example, for the horizontal pushing movement, I could lay down on my back, get a bar, and do a bench press, where I push a bar away from my chest. 
Another way I could do it is I could do a push-up. Maybe I have to do a modified push-up to start and I start on my hands and knees and I'm pushing the floor away from me. Both of those movements are training the same muscle groups, we're just doing them a little bit differently. Um, and so as far as type is concerned, uh, maybe find something that interests you. Sometimes people find it interesting to do body weight, um, to do what they call or term calisthenics. Some people find that very interesting, whereas some people find the weights very interesting. Find something that's interesting to you and then go for that and then try to make sure that you're trying to hit the appropriate intensity ranges. It's also been recommended that um, if you have the choice between multi-joint movements and single joint movements, try to go for the multi-joint movements. For example, um, if I'm going to be training my horizontal pushing movement, right, if I do a bench press where I have a bar, I am moving multiple joints. I'm moving my shoulder and I'm also moving my elbow, which means that I'm getting more muscles involved with the exercise. So I'm getting more muscle involvement. I could also work the same motion with my shoulder and keep my elbow straight where we do something like a dumbbell fly where I'm pulling in like this. I'm still pushing my shoulder the same direction, but my elbows stay straight. It's recommended maybe we start with those multi-joint movements. One, it'll get more muscle activation involved. And then two, it'll probably save you some time in the gym because you don't have to train both the uh, elbow or the shoulder pushing that way and the elbow pushing that way on a different exercise. So as far as sets and repetitions are concerned, this can get a little tricky because there are many different philosophies on um, how many sets and reps we should be doing to train a specific physiological adaption like strength or power or endurance. For most novice lifters, if you're just starting, we would recommend probably starting with somewhere between the rep ranges of 8 and 12 repetitions and somewhere between two and four sets. And the reason we start there is because um, by hanging out in the eight to 12 repetition range, we're getting probably the most advantage as far as most physiological adaptions. Now, as you get better at weightlifting and you wanna get more creative and advanced and you're going for specific goals, you can definitely break away from those rep ranges. Uh, but if you wanna get really good um, adaptations, physiological adaptations for the beginner, hanging around those rep ranges is probably a good place to start. Another thing to think about is how much rest should we be taking between each set. Now, if you are having an appropriate intensity, say you're hanging out between the six to eight uh, uh, on the RPE scale of intensity, then you should probably be resting anywhere from two to three minutes between each set because you're probably going to get tired by lifting that much weight. So um, if you're going to do something intense, then we need to have a little bit more rest so that way you're prepared for the next set. Now, if you're to be training muscular endurance and you're just doing a lot of repetitions, it's really lightweight, then you could probably get away with a rest period of 30 to 60 seconds. Uh, but if you're gonna be training like the way we're recommending, then you should probably be resting somewhere between two and three minutes per set. And then another thing that to think about is how much rest should you be having between each time you work a major muscle group. For example, if I work my push day, I've got all these pushing movements, I'm working these pushing muscles, how long should I wait before I challenge them again? And it's been recommended that you give at least two days in between each session or 48 hours. So if I work out one day, I should not do the same movements the next day because what we're actually doing to the muscle is we're actually causing little micro tears in the muscle. Whenever I'm lifting weights, I'm actually not making the weights, the, my muscles stronger while I'm lifting. What I'm doing is I'm actually causing little micro tears and the body thinks, oh, like that's a problem, I need to go fix that. So it'll send blood and nutrients and, and all that kind of stuff down to the area, the building blocks down to the area that could have little micro tears and it's gonna need some time to go down there and fix it up and make it stronger. So you actually get stronger, not while you're lifting, it's actually in that rest period between when you lift and then when you lift again. And so your body makes itself stronger so the next time you go and lift weights, you're able to do a little bit more. And that's how we kind of progress and be able to get stronger over time. All right, so that's a, a lot of basic fundamental things that you need to know before you go into the weight room. If you guys have any questions about anything that we've talked about, feel free to give us a call. And if you guys have specific questions on what type of workout programs will work for you, give us a call and we can take a look at you and break it down and give you recommendations on what we think would be best. Um, if you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a like and comment down in the comment section below and we'll see you guys on the next one.